That was off. Okay, now it's on.
sorry. Everybody woke up. Joe Pipe, time to start. Welcome everybody to the first Asia Crypt session on side channel analysis and leakage resilience. Mm. Uh, and the first talk of this session will be given by Ami Moratti, uh, with the co author for his paper, being Tobias, Tobias Schneider. Uh, the title of uh, this work is Side Channel Analysis Protection and Load Latency in Action Case Study of Prince and Middle. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, let's see um, why I'm here actually, um, to um, a bit motivate uh, what the topic is and what is the motivation um, to give such a talk, is that um, I need to um, remind you about the low latency and low latency encryption and decryption and why it's needed and um, it actually, um, it's, it's actually initiated um, a couple of years ago by industry sector that say that uh, we want to have um, low latency ciphers or low latency encryption and decryption at the same time to um, support memory encryption. Um, just suppose that uh, you have a system on chip, you have a complete system and by the system it has a microcontroller or microprocessor and wants to save or read from the memory but the data that should be uh, written in the memory should be encrypted. And then if uh, you just stay with the, let's say, a standard ciphers or the noun ciphers, like for instance, AES, and then you have a pretty, let's say, normal implementation of the AES, which is a round-based architecture. It needs minimum 10 clock cycles. And then every time that you want to read uh, from the memory or you want to write into the memory, you need to wait 10 clock cycles. Then, of course, it's not optimum then you prefer to have a lower latency, means that uh, the software is able to react or the implementation react very fast in a way that it's somehow synchronized with the clock cycle of the microcontroller, microprocessor, and then in every uh, uh, clock cycle that you can write or read from the memory, at the same time you can encrypt and decrypt the data, uh, that you write the encrypted data into the memory and read afterwards the decrypted data from the memory. Um, but um, actually, why memory encryption is required? Uh, of course, in the scenarios that the chip is in the hand of the attacker, because the attacker may be able to open the chip, uh, let's, uh, let's say, read the memory content or dump the memory content, and then for that reason to, uh, to be against such an attacker or to, to protect against such an attacker, you, you go for memory encryption. Otherwise, there is no, uh, in my point of view, no reason to have the memory encryption, right? And then if we have such a scenario that we, we think that the device is in the hand of the attackers, that uh, should we not care about the search and leakage of the implementation? I would say just, yeah, we don't care, just the device um, doesn't matter, it leaks information, but, um, but the memory is encrypted. Um, to this sense, um, we have tried to see what are the options when you want to have the um, low latency imp implementation of the ciphers, let's say uh, the best noun or the first um, proposal was prints. What happens if you want to have the also side channel protection at the same time and such an implementation? For instance, we look at the prints. Here is the design of the prints. It has uh, five for forward rounds and five backward, backward rounds. And I don't go to much details, but it has, of course, a Spox. You have the mixed column, shift rows, and key addition, and also round, count, round constant, which are added to the state. And lowest latency can be achieved by fully unrolled architecture. It means that if you have implemented this 
cipher this design in fully combinatorial circuit means that all, only gates, there is no register at all. Once you put the input here, either plain text or cipher text, and then set, of course, the parameter like the, play, like the key and also the, whether you want play, um, encryption or decryption, then after a particular time, the cipher text is ready. And this time, of course, depends on the, how large the system is, how large the, how many gates you have, and actually, which is defined by the latency of whole of this combinatorial circuit. This is a graph here. You can, you can have an idea about how uh, fast or how slow this implementation is. If you want a very fast implementation, which is um, the minimum for prints in the technology that we consider is nine nanoseconds, and then um, it, you, you end up with roughly or more than 17,000 uh, gate equivalents, or if you want to have a smaller implementation, let's say around 9,000 gate equivalents, you reach in the areas or around 13 nanoseconds. Of course, this is for, for one particular library and technology. If you change the technology, this, this figure changes. Then the idea was single cycle fashion or single cycle implementation, fully unrolled architecture that, that is completely between the processor and the memory. Then you don't need to care about anything, just you give the plain, uh, plain text, the software text is ready after, let's say, maximum 30 nanoseconds or 9 nanoseconds or other way around for the decryption. Good. Now, if you want to have the sidechain protection, we have a couple of different schemes. Of course, we have heuristic and ad hoc schemes like noise addition, shuffling, temporal randomization, and so on. Um, for instance, you can for sure add noise addition to such an implementation to a fully unrolled architecture. It doesn't matter. Of course, it increases the noise, and then the attacker, of course, has a bit more difficulties to perform the attack depending on the level of the noise that you add. Shuffling most likely is not possible here because you don't have any register, you don't have any order of the computations. This is just fully combinator combinatorial circuit and then you don't have any chance to change the temporal order of the operations. The same for the temporal randomization. But then on the other side, we can go for t uh, theoretically sound schemes like masking that we call it in search and analysis, a search and area masking, which is actually just a secret sharing and multi-party computation. This is the same concept, but since we are using very s uh, simple scenarios of, of um, secret sharing and multi-party computation, which is a Boolean secret sharing, we call it usually masking and Boolean masking. And we have threshold implementation in, in short TI which is a correct way of implementing Boolean masking in hardware. Now, let's say, uh, a short, a sh shortly I will uh, review the TI and the concept of TI, and then we come back to the prints and see what happens. Minimum number of shares means that the number of shares that you need to implement the circuit sharing scheme depends on the algebraic degree of the sparks of the nonlinear functions that you have. Um, for instance, in the case of uh, prints, or let's say for most of the four bit, um, all of the ciphers that they are using four bit bijections, uh, the, the, the Spox is a cubic function, which is algebraic degree of three. And then for first order security, it directly mapped to minimum four shares you need to implement. Or uh, you can decompose the function, this cubic function, to two quadratic functions. I mean, this is a quadratic function, another one quadratic function. And then instead of four shares, you can implement it with three shares. And then you need to put a register in between. If you don't put a register between these two stages, then of course, again, you have a big combinatorial circuit which works with three shares and the algebraic degree of this, uh, of the function that it, that it realizes is again uh, three. And then with three shares, of course, you cannot implement this. Then definitely this leaks. Then you have to put the register between quadratic parts if you go for minimum number of shares. But putting the register between these uh, uh, decomposed functions or between the nonlinear functions, it's already contradicting uh, with a single cycle fashion that you require for, um, for, um, for uh, fully unrolled architectures that you say um, low latency implementations. A bit more about this, we, we come back to this uh, concept a bit later, but just, uh, just imagine that this implements the sparks, let's say X 
and z, x is the input of the S-box, and z is the output of the S-box, and then I represent x with three shares in a way that if I x or all these three, I get the x, and if I x or all these three, I get z, which will be the x input of the S-box, z output of the S-box. Yeah, this is a Boolean sharing here, and another one Boolean sharing of the output. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of properties for the TI um, that you should, um, you should fulfill if, if the implementation of TI is correct. We come back to this later. Um, but um, you, you can, I mean, I heard a couple of times from, mainly from industry that, yeah, let's have some heuristic ad hoc architecture, means that instead of fully protect the implementation, just, just protect the first round and the last round. I mean, the things that the attacker can, um, can predict if, of course, if the plain text uh, or cipher text uh, are not controlled. If they are controlled, you can extend the attack to the second round. But just imagine with this uh, situation that the first round of the cipher and the second round of the cipher should be implemented, and then still you want to stay with the unrolled architecture, means that you uh, share the input in four shares, as I said, this is a cubic function, and so minimum you need four shares. And then you have a cubic uh, represent, I mean, uh, shared representation of the cubic functions with four shares. And then after first round is done, then you XOR again the shares, and then these uh, rounds are processed in an unshared way. And then again, last round, again, you uh, make a new sharing of the middle value before the last round, and again, the last round is a shared implementation. This is not a correct realization of TI. Of course, this will leak. Yeah? I mean, we know this. I mean, this is clear. You don't have register here, first, first of all. And after that, this part is already leaking the, the data, which depends on the, let's say, the last, that's the, the output of the first round. And um, these are already predictable. But this is a fully unrolled architecture. It means that you don't control this part, how they are implemented, of course, these parts which are gray should be controlled in a way that the shares are not mixed together. But um, this is a not a correct implementation. But um, because I heard this a couple of times, and let's, let's have some, some uh, kind of a crazy ideas like this, which is not a correct way, that what is the achievement of this? If you implement this and then measure the power traces, this is a PGA-based evaluations. Here it, at the left side is the unprotected unrolled implementation and the right side is the TI protected, but of course it's, it's still ill TI protected, unrolled. And then the power consumption is of course increased roughly three times, because the circuit is of course much larger. And then um, the evaluations that we have done is based on first t-test. I mean, if you are uh, familiar with the t-test, you can have um, kind of a leakage assessment, whether, whether, the, whether the design or the implementation has leakage, depending on the depending on the um, intermediate values. With a complete um, um, random versus um, fixed t-test, we have performed here with one million traces on the other side, and the unrolled version with 100 million traces. And then uh, this is clear that it should leak. This is unprotected, and the other one is still has leakage, yeah, which, as I said, is expected, because the first round and only the last round are protected, and then the XOR that make the, again, unshared value leaks. You can also have the SNR, which SNR calculate the signal to noise ratio based on the plain text nibbles, because the Spox is a four bit. And then instead of, um, um, because the bijection is, uh, sorry, the Spox is a bijection and the key addition is also linear, you can have uh, computer SNR based on the plain text nibble, which will directly map to, to the way if you calculate the SNR based on, let's say, Spox input or a Spox output. In this case, the, the, the SNR is decreases here if you see it's pretty small, but 10 to the minus 3 and here 10 to the minus 5. The SNR is pretty small, means that the leakage is reduced, but you cannot say that, say that this implementation is probably secure. If you, of course, this is uh, it's ELTI, but it reduces the leakage. Um, and then the question is, what are the other solutions? If you want to have a probably secure design, then you have to stay with a round-based architecture. There is no way. You have to put the registers. And then this is the, the upper part figure is the original design of the round-based architecture. You have here the register, again, for the prints, for encryption and decryption. It has two paths, SPOX and a SPOX inverse, uh, because uh, it has forward round and a backward round. And um, if you want to make the TI or uh, the Boolean mask version of this, you have to implement S 
and S inverse, which are pretty large circuits because nonlinear parts. And we have uh, observed that the Spox and Spox inverse are actually affine equivalent in prints. And then you can just have one instance of them, doesn't matter, a Spox or a Spox inverse. We check a Spox inverse was a bit uh, more optimized than a Spox. And then with two other affine functions, if you go from this way, you implement a Spox. If you go from this way, you implement the Spox inverse. You know? Then you have one instance of the Spox instead of two that. Um, to, uh, let's say, reduce the complexity or the size of the circuit if you implement it with, a, uh, with TI. It means that this design is not necessarily smaller than this in an unprotected scenario, but in the protected scenario, if you, have to, you want to implement the mask version of this box, the below one should be a smaller than the upper one. Um, first uh, problem is the, how do you um, correctly implement the TI of, of uh, a box with three shares? Unfortunately, it has to be decomposed in three stages because one property of the TI is, the, is uniformity. It means that uh, if you implement the Spox, again, I come back to that slide that we discussed uh, here. Oops, it's pretty slow reacting to my buttons, okay. Um, this, this implementation, uh, if you see this a G function as which receives three inputs and three outputs, if you consider as a bijection again, as a function again, which let's say three times input, three times output, it should be also a bijection. Otherwise, the output that you have here, of course, it's a correct sharing of the output of this part, or also the correct sharing of the a Spox output, but this is not a uniform sharing. And then when it's a not, not uniform sharing, the next rounds, when this input is going to other nonlinear functions, it means that you shared the input with a, with a mask, or let's say with mask or random data that they are biased. They are not uniformly distributed. Then you have to achieve the uniformity of the implementation as well in the TI scenario. Now, to achieve the uniformity of the um, present S-box, you have to decompose it in three stages, which is actually known. This is not our founding. And then um, there are different ways. Uh, these, these names actually are corresponding to, do, uh, to some um, uh, definitions that um, have been published before, which are the quadratic function and then some classification by researchers in Kaolowen. And then um, when you decompose it in this way, and then there are affine transformation between quadratic functions, and then you implement it with three stages. It means that you have to put one register here, one register after, this, uh, after the first quadratic functions, one register after the second quadratic functions, and of course a third quadratic function, C, one register here as a state register. It means that you have to have three stages and three registers, which directly affects on the, on the latency that you have. If you, if you implement this, um, then you have to wait, let's say number of clock cycle is 10, and then 10 times uh, 3, you have to wait till the output is available, right? If, if you have another Spox which, has, uh, which could be decomposed in two stages, then of course it reduces the latency for you. But there are other Spox families in the prints that they are offered, uh, suggested, but all of them unfortunately need to be uh, shared in three stages. It means that there is no difference if you change the Spox, one of those Spoxes which are suggested by prints. If you now measure this, uh, the, again, FPGA implementation, uh, the power consumption is um, uh, reduced, but of course you have more rounds instead of one big peak that we have seen here. There are clock cycles, and this design was running at a pretty low frequency, and uh, three megahertz, I believe. And then with the t-test, uh, it shows you that with 100 million traces, you don't have a first order leakage, which was expected, I mean, which was our goal. Of course, because this is a first order uh, secure implementation, then second order leakage and third order leakage are detectable for sure. Yeah, but to, to avoid this leakage, then you can easily, easily add noise addition. Then the noise addition plus the first order secure implementation will make this practically hard to detect or to exploit. Now, um, the idea was that, um, yeah, we have seen this, but we don't want to have a round-based implementation because we, we, we have to make a fast clock in the design. And the industry was saying that, no, um, if you have a fast clock to, to achieve that high la uh, low latency, then we need to add another source of the clock, which let's say works at 100 megahertz, but it takes energy, it, it consumes energy. And when the, when the encryption function doesn't work, it just consumes energy, and this is, this is not possible, and we don't want this. Or sometimes you need to go, for instance, let's say for 
um, um, f clock frequency of 400 megahertz to achieve the lowest latency for that round-based architecture. But in not on all platforms, let's say 400 megahertz is possible. Then the idea was, was to, yeah, let's use asynchronous logic. Probably you have not heard about asynchronous logic. I don't know if you're an electrical engineer, you have probably heard that asynchronous logic is, is pretty different to synchronous logic, means that every gate um, has kind of acknowledgement and request, means that when the gates are finished the evaluation, they, they send uh, the data to the next gate and the next gate evaluates. And some kind of a, um, evaluation um, a waveform, which is cascaded to the whole of the uh, circuit, and then um, the circuit or the gates actually do not have any glitches, and um, and then you don't need to, um, um, in theory, put put register in your design. It means that all the gates are completely glitch free, and then you can implement whole of a design in a uh, in a loop way. And then when it, when the design uh, the computation is is done by the design, the design will give you a signal that that the computation is done. The idea was to use, let's say, let's use the asynchronous logic to avoid the fast clock in the circuit and then see uh, uh, which achievements we have. If you are familiar with the side channel logic styles, it's very, very close, very similar to the concept of WDDL, which is a uh, wave dynamic differential logic proposed in 2004 as a side channel countermeasure, or actually reducing the leakage of the side channel. Now, this is an asynchronous round based TI but um, we have to again put the registers. You see the registers here again? The problem is that if you remove the registers between the stages, again, this will be a fully combinatorial circuit, these two parts that they are working again on three shares, but the algebraic degree of this is still, again, more than two, and then you have definitely the leakage. Then you have to put the registers, but the point is you can have another part of the circuit which triggers this register. It means it's completely independent of the clock, but when the computation is here done, it says the register is safe. And again, the next part, when the computation is done, it says, okay, safe, and so on. Then this circuit needs only one signal to say a start, and then when it's done based on the control signal, control logic, it tells you a done signal and I'm done, right? without any external clock. But if you implement this, again on FPJ, it was pretty hard to implement in FPJ because asynchronous circuits are not uh, made to be implemented in an FPJ, or let's say FPJs are not designed or fabricated to, imp to implement or realize the asynchronous logic. Then you see here the small clocks, actually the clocks are internally generated by the system itself. This is the active for the registers. But unfortunately, again, you see the first order leakage. Of course, this is a very small with 100 million traces, but if you want to stay again with the provable security, this is not what you wanted. If you want to see this and say, oh, the leakage is a small, you could stay with the first design, as I said, just first and round, last round are protected, and then your design would be similar to this. The reason for that actually uh, is coming from the asynchronous concept. Um, if you look more, uh, let's say, carefully here, um, these registers uh, are triggered by one function here. The function will tell when the computation of all these uh, three are done and say, okay, saving this, or even one of them done and second one is done, third one is done, then saving the register. The problem is that this is already, uh, sorry, this is already a linear, a non-linear function over these shares. Means that when all of them are done, then save. Then, then you are already leaking information about these three shares. Yeah, that is the source of the leakage. Yeah, and the good thing, I mean, if, if you come back to the TI concept, the TI initially proposed to be secure in presence of glitches. Yeah, and then, um, but actually, it also uh, has a synchronous design which avoids this timing dependence. It means that uh, unintentionally, the design of TI was synchronizing all these stages and then made that the second stage starts completely independent of the first stage. And then it avoids such a leakage that we see with our synchronous logic. Um, then the one conclusion here that TI and a synchronous circuit is actually the incorrect construction. I mean, you, can, you cannot easily uh, combine TI and a synchronous circuit. Um, then 
just very shortly about Midori, what happens in Midori this is again round based architecture and you know probably Midori has been designed, of course Midori 64 is broken, but Midori has been designed to have the shortest latency in a round based architecture which actually fits very good to here. And then the sparks of Midori compared to, pre to prints can be decomposed in two stages to have a correct TI. Then in theory the, the, the latency of Midori if implemented in this fashion is better, which means that the latency is shorter. But now, the one question was that, how do we deal with the fast clock? You can gen internally generate the fast clock. This is the engineering part, probably completely out of the scope of the crypto. But you can in generate the clock internally of the system and then have just some um, control signals to say that it, it, this ring oscillator should start and when should, should, should stop working. And then, without any external clock, which always working and consuming energy, you can, you can implement and run the system. Um, as the last slide, I uh, run out of the time already. Um, this is, for instance, the synchronous run based TI with a fast internal clock. And then again, you see here small clocks which are generated by the internal oscillator. And this large peak is because of a lot of uh, clock cycle and a lot of uh, rounds are uh, running at the same time or after each other. And then um, the problem that we have seen with asynchronous circuit is gone. We have the first order security and the second order, as I said should be expected, or in this time, just a matter of chance that the third order leakage um, has not been seen. Um, that was not the last slide, sorry. <laughs> um, here, a very short comparison, what happens, um, the circuit with the asynchronous uh, design is extremely larger compared to the round-based TI, for instance. You compare these two. I mean, the upper one is for the shortest, uh, for the smallest design, and this number is for the shortest latency. And then these are extremely larger, let's say um, around t three times larger. And, uh, um, and then the gain is actually very, very low. And then the circuit is very larger compared to this one because it has two phases of the evaluation and pre-charge. But if you look at the Midori again, uh, the latency is shorter and the design is also lower, uh, smaller because of the Xbox. Yeah, of course, as I said, the Midori is broken, then probably it makes sense to design something similar to Midori, but uh, with not with the known leakage that or let's say the the weakness that the uh, midori has okay thank you so much and sorry for spending a lot of time uh, let's thank the speaker <laughs>[Speaker B] Thanks, Samir, for a very interesting presentation. Um, so, if you have a fast internal clock, which was one of the solutions you were proposing near the end, does it not really defeat the purpose of low latency crypto to begin with? If you know what I mean? Because you do not necessarily need to go towards symmetric e crypto designs that can be very fast inside one clock cycle because you're using more clock cycles anyway. Do, do you understand my question? I don't. Um, probably did not understand your correction correctly. Uh, so a design like Prince mm -hmm. is specifically optimized to be implemented uh, very efficiently, or I mean with a very low latency, assuming that you need to be able to execute the entire block cipher call inside one clock cycle. Unrolled, fully unrolled. Article. Fully unrolled. Mm -hmm. um, and if this restriction is not really there anymore because we have a fast internal clock anyway, then um, maybe we're not really going towards designs like prints, but other designs could be very suitable as well. Um, I wouldn't say that, for instance, mid, if, if you go for a faster, fast clock, Midori is also better than Prince in this case. Yeah? I mean, even if you completely remove all the registers and fully unrolled, again, Midori should be still good compared to Prince. Um, it's, I mean, it's not much far away from, from Prince Midori in this case. But, um, but I cannot say that the other design probably work much better um, the, the problem is that in the fully unrolled design, many gates are combined to the library that the, that the cells that are available in the library. And then just by trial and check, you say you can check whether how big is this design or what is the latency of this design. Yeah? Um, 
I would say mm, it's not contradicting with the, with the um, let's say, main goal of, of having low latency software if you go for a round based architecture. Of course, what makes sense or what is important is, is to have very low number of rounds, which you can see it also in prints. Yeah, I mean, the prints has a low, pretty low number of rounds compared to other softwares which have four, four bit Xbox. It doesn't matter if you have a higher clock frequency. Right? No, it higher matters. No, 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 it matters. Like, sorry, sorry, wait a second. Here, the latency is the number of clock cycles, right, multiplied by the critical path delay. Means that this is 31 multiplied by 4. This will be the latency, not latency, not the frequency. Not the frequency itself. The latency is that latency of when you give the plain text and when the software text is ready which will be the number of clock cycles that you need multiplied by the critical path delay. And look at here, this is 40 by 4, and this is 31 by 4. Because just you have less number of rounds, or let's say because of the stages of the S-Box, then the num let's say in total, the latency is shorter. Just, just one more short question. Mm -hmm. uh, your results are given for A6, in case yep. equivalent, but your evaluation is done F in FPGA. Yep, correct. To what extent this analysis done for FPGAs carries to ASIC? Um, with res I just did the uh, evaluation, the side channel evaluation on FPGAs, not, not any, let's say, how big or how small or how fast sure. is the implementation sure. on the FPGA. Just uh, because uh, making actually the chip for this design, uh, which definitely would take me one, one more year, uh, yeah, this is clear. But, um, but the security, the anal security how, how analysis, I would say we can trust on that. Yeah, with the FPGA design, because we actually we, we were misusing the FPGA um, elements, let's say, for the case of particular, for the asynchronous circuit, uh, we were using every loot as a single gate to realize everything correctly. Yeah, and then um, I would say what we made mm -hmm. in such a leakage should not be much different to the, to the ASIC one. Uh -huh. and, and there are no ASIC tools that would allow you to do analysis you know, using tools rather than real circuit. You mean, you mean doing the, the, the simulation? Right. Okay, no, yeah, if you have it not. It would be too yeah. time consuming or impossible. You mean if you use a simulation instead right. of practicing yeah. FPGA? Yeah, the problem is here, if you do the simulation, um, this is the time, right? Because you need to do that, if you want to have a good simulation, you need to have uh, the simulation in the transistor domain and then taking every trace, depending on what you have, but will may t w w which may take um, um, around, let's say, in the fastest way, a couple of seconds, and then having one million traces or 100 million traces <laughs> would be not be feasible. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Mm -hmm. Thank you.